Six Nations, folks. England and Italy. It's 31 points to 14. It's what I would describe as probably a solid enough without being spectacular win for England at home. We're going to go through some key events and stats, and uh, you guys can let us know your thoughts. Um, 4 a.m. wake-up call for this one, so still pretty early. Um, and maybe not quite as dramatic as some of the well, the, the, the two games the previous days. This one, I think, pretty much went according to the script, right? New look English side with new coach in second game performs to expectations, but still has room for improvement. And Italy side, who's also improved, um, you know, never beaten England, loses by a lesser margin than they ordinarily would have and win the second half by two points. So, yeah, it's kind of, like I said, kind of solid without being spectacular for both sides. Like the Italians would have loved to get a bit closer. England loved to, would have loved to have scored a few more points, but this is just kind of the way it went. Uh, the Italian, Italians couldn't make much of their first chance. They, they had the initial uh, attack when England conceded a penalty, but they got turned over after a couple of phases, so nothing doing. England's scrum was getting on top real early. They were putting a lot of kicks through in this game, England, but not a lot was doing with them. Uh, the first one for Malins wasn't gathered, but it certainly put the Italian guys under a bit of pressure uh, territorially. Uh, the first try for England came through their forwards. It was uh, Willis who went over for that one. The pressure had been mounting. It's a maul. It goes over too easily. And um, yeah, seven points to nil. So good reward for England for all that early pressure. When the Italians had some attack, they were kind of going backwards a wee bit under a lot of pressure from the England defensive line. But England conceded another penalty which meant it was another chance for the Italians in the English half. Then Itoje conceded a penalty at the lineout, so the Italians went for the corner. They weren't going for the threes in this game, which was an interesting um, interesting option. Uh, they had like a six-meter lineout, not far from the English line, but uh, eventually Dombrant holds up one of the Italian carriers and um, manages to win a kind of mall turnover. So they shut down that, that I guess, an Italian attack, which was threatening to get them... You know, back into the game. If Italy score that first try, or if they score from this one, uh, maybe they're able to put a, a bit of a seed of doubt into the minds of the English players and the crowd and whatnot. But the fact that England score the first two tries and never really look like you know allowing the Italians back to within one score meant um, the game never really looked like going up for some kind of surprise finish. Uh, Lamaro unfortunately got injured and he had to go off on 23 minutes, but I guess that's one of the benefits of the Italians picking an extra four to the bench. So he was uh, replaced by Zuliani. Um, 26 minutes, another more chance for England. Italy were under the pump. It's a yellow card warning. Too many penalties conceded. England go again. They, um, they do a crossfield uh, kick to... Was it from Stewart? Well, either way, the Chris Crossfield kick was way too big. And, uh, yeah, nothing was doing from it. So the kicking game wasn't able to work. But uh, eventually, uh, Lorenzo Canone gets yellow carded for too many penalties conceded from the Italians. Five meter tap and go from the English in a few phases sends Chesham over. So there's that 14 point lead I was talking about. So England from here, they look pretty comfortable. Uh, and the Italians, as I said in the first half, really under a lot of pressure to the point where Fischetti... The prop is having to do a clearing kick just to get them out of dodge. So a lot of pressure. Uh, 34 minutes, Farrell put a little dink and kick through for Jamie George, of all people. But uh, Padovani was able to sweep that one back. I, I thought England probably should have scored from that one. But it didn't really matter because it looked like Malins had scored. Uh, not Malins. Um, Van Portfleet had scored from a Malins um, kind of kick return play. But they ruled that one off for a bit of obstruction. But then it didn't really matter. So two chances potentially for tries blown. But the third one, they do get the try. Uh, it's Jamie George. <laughs> when in doubt, go for the mall. And uh, the mall gets them over. So misconversion. But 19 points to no lead at halftime. There'd been one more chance for Farrell before halftime, but he wasn't able to take it. So halftime, England have had more possession, more territory, 53% and 59% respectively. The Italians have conceded more than double the penalties, 9-4. to four, And the two, two clean breaks in the game have both gone to England. So it's two zip and the Italian scrum, as I mentioned, has been under a fair bit of pressure. Second half, though, the Italians... Started better, and remember, they, they did win the second half, just barely, but they, they did win it, which was 
you know, more than we can say from the last time. These two players when the Italians couldn't even score a point. So they started the half with like 15 plus phases. Capuzzo, Royal Nugent was getting his name right today. Happy days. Because um, he was butchering it last week. Um, someone must have had a word with him. But um, yeah, Capuzzo getting over the advantage line. Riccioli is able to finish the try off with a bit of power. So it gets the Italians on the board. 19-7. Still not game on, but certainly closer than 19-0. Uh, bit of handbags between... Negri and Old Farrell. Farrell didn't appreciate a tackle that Negri put on him, which I think uh, some fans will find a bit ironic, given Farrell's got a bit of a history with some kind of poor tackling technique. But um, the ref kind of largely ignored it, eh? It's a bit weird. I feel like he just didn't want to know about some of that stuff. Um, I wrote a note that the England kicks are still not uh, really finding their mark with that kicking game. But that being said, later on, Farrell did put a real peach of a, a kick into the corner. But that was um, after England had got their penalty try. And it's the maul again, which goes over. So three of these tries directly from set piece, which is maybe a little bit concerning uh, in that other teams may not be so susceptible to the maul. But certainly in this game, it was paying dividends for them. So uh, Ferrari gets yellow carded for collapsing the maul. It's a penalty try. It's 26-7. That's the bonus point in the bag for England. So kind of, uh, you know, job done in that regard. Um, after that feral kick for the corner, um, the Italians are able to exit. Um, the English can't score any points from from the yellow card period, which is a little bit disappointing. Uh, you got the extra man you should be able to punish, but nothing's really doing from it. And um, not long later, Italy are able to get their second try, man. Menoncello has the initial line break. And um, Fusco is able to go up for a good try. They had to check that one for a bit of obstruction, but the ref says that one's all good. So it's 26-14. And not long down the other end, before this happened, like Ben Earl had been putting in a little kick through. That's what I'm talking about, about being, I don't know, just a bit off. Yeah, I'm not sure what was going on, but 26-14 looks a little bit happier for the Italians, but still not really threatening. But Italy was certainly looking sharper. I wrote England going off the boil a little bit. You know, just maybe taking their foot off the gas. You could tell the crowd was trying to get into it because the crowd had been kind of low-key throughout the game compared to the two previous games. They, were, they started on like 60-something minutes to swing, uh, to sing Sweet Low, Sweet Chariot to try and get some oomph into the game. Uh, they did get the uh, the final try of the game, though, England through, uh, through Arundel comes off the bench and scores one, Alex Mitchell. Kind of poor defense from the Italians, but he um, he has a wee sniping sideways run and sets up Arundel for the finish. So, yeah, good impact from both the subs. Conversion hits the post, 34, sorry, 31-14, and that's the way the game finishes. The final 10 minutes just kind of wind down with not a lot doing. Uh, England kicked the ball out at the end after winning a, uh, a penalty. So, yeah, that's it. Like I said, I didn't really know how to feel about this game. Was I, like, a bit disappointed? But not really. As I said, it kind of met expectations without really exceeding them. Like England, bonus point win at home, bouncing back from a loss last week. Resurgent Italian team kind of kept that bay. Um, but the Italians got close, like 17 point difference for the Italians and to win one of the halves is way better than they're used to doing against England. So it's kind of hard to be disappointed with that. It's just, um, yeah, it wasn't really anything ultra fantastic about it, but it was, you know, that was it. I don't know. I'm still a bit maybe confused, but I think it, I think it met expectations. You guys let me know what you reckon. Maybe it's just too early in the morning and I lack sleep and I'm being a bit of a downer. Um, but I don't really think it was a downer. I don't know. Uh, run meters 305 to 395, so the Italians edged that certainly in the second half. Uh, Italy finished with more possession, but England territory 59-41. Territory's um, lopsided but positions close England make more tackles 178 to 127 uh, the Italians completion rate is a bit higher which is pleasing because last week they fell off a few um, for the Italians I reckon the key one is penalties conceded uh, 14 to 7 so double the penalties and that's kind of what we said in the preview is that you know, they benefited from a really lopsided penalty count last week against France but they didn't get it this week so um, and six penalties conceded by their props. bit concerning. But what they'll be happy with, and what England maybe won't be that happy with, is the attacking numbers, like four clean breaks to Italy's six. So Italy edged that area. 40 defenders beaten to England's 22. So England's attack 
if you take out those mall tries, isn't maybe looking that flash. But like I said, it's the second game in charge. So what are we expecting? Um, turnovers 1-7 to 5 to England. I mean, Ollie Lawrence gets man of the match. If you're looking for attacking sharpness, he did look sharp. Seven defenders beating a clean break, 58 metres. Uh, Ludlam makes 22 tackles out of 25, which is a pretty good shift. Cup Watson ugh, continues to look really sharp. 84 metres, three clean breaks, and 12 defenders beaten. Uh, Nico Tedder makes 13 from 13 tackles. But yeah, folks, I definitely don't mean to be a downer. I certainly enjoyed watching the game. Um, but yeah, it didn't have... Uh, the the scoreline was always pretty comfortable. Um, yeah, it didn't really have anything kind of wow about it. But it was solid enough. So, yes, a good kind of 6 or 7 out of 10. B plus? B? What do you guys reckon? Um, let us know your thoughts on the game. Do you think the Italians, maybe we need to go, oh, I need to be giving them a bit more love because, um, you know, they, they went to Twickenham, which has not been a happy hunting ground for them, and they managed to, to win a half of rugby and, um, you know, showed what they could do, especially in that second half. Do we need to give England a bit more credit for making sure they didn't slip up against this resurgent Italian side and managed to walk away with a bonus point win. Um, but yeah, you guys let us know your thoughts and um, I'll talk to you guys again soon. See you later.